Hello and welcome to the eighth tutorial of the series. Today's lesson will be based on modifiers. Modifiers allows us to distort objects in different ways. Uh, each modifier alters an object differently and more than one modifier can be applied to the same object. Now let's go ahead and look at how these work. Let's start off by creating a cylinder. So just click and drag within a perspective viewport. Zoom out a bit. Make it once whatever size you want. So about that should do. So now we've got our cylinder and we can go ahead and apply some modifiers to it. Now let's go ahead to our modifier panel on the right side of the create tab. As soon as you click that, you notice we've got the parameters to edit our cylinder, but that's not what we want right now. So we're gonna head right back to the modifier list. Now, as soon as you click that, we've got quite a lot of modifiers in here and you can, you can apply any of these to whatever objects you've got in the scene. Now I'm going to start off by applying the bend modifier to this. Now you notice as soon as I click that, we've got an orange outline uh, going around our cylinder. Right below our stack area, we've got the parameters. Now each modifier has a different set of parameters and um, each modifier affects an object in a different way, as I already explained. But in this case, you can mess around with the angle and the direction of our object. So for example, I'm increasing the angle. I can decrease it to go the other side. And with regards to direction, as soon as you click that, we can almost rotate around. So this is just a case of you creating different objects and playing around uh, with different modifiers to see what they do. Like I said before, you can apply more than one modifier um, on, on one object. So I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, apply something on that. This time I'm going to melt a cylinder. So as soon as you apply that, we've got uh, a new modifier on top of the band modifier. Now, as you can see, the parameters have changed as well. So in this case, as I increase the melt amount, you notice our object is actually uh, melting. Let me just show you that. And as I keep increasing that amount, we finally hit ground zero. Now you can undo that by just reducing uh, the melt amount and that will return your object to its original state as soon as you hit zero over here. Now this helps you decide how wide the spread is. So for example, I increase that to 44 and you notice spreading much wider than before. If I increase that, see we can actually control it quite well. Now, one thing you notice within uh, this area is that we've got light bulbs right next to our modifiers. What this means is you can switch a modifier on and off like so. So I'm going to switch off the melt modifier and straight away that returns our object uh, to its original state. I can also turn off the bend modifier and now we've literally gone back to where we started off. And when you switch it off, the lights, the light bulbs turn gray. As soon as you switch it back on, uh, the light bulbs turn white. So this helps you uh, with regards to um, understanding how the modifier is affecting your object. So another thing you can do, you can actually delete a modifier. So let's say you're not happy with uh, the melt modifier. You just make sure it's selected and then hit this button here which is remove modifier from the stack. As soon as you hit that, the modifier is gone. Another thing you can do is um, if you're working with multiple objects and you don't want to spend all your time applying the same modifier to different objects. For example, I've got, I've got that box there. Actually, I'll use cylinders for the purpose of this tutorial. 
so I've got maybe two more cylinders now all I need to do is get my select and move tool hold down shift and select the other object and then go ahead to the modifier panel get the list and in this case I'm going to apply the bend modifier as soon as you do that everything within that selection get an orange border around it now as you play around with the parameters you notice they're all getting affected at the same time let me just maximize this window for you to see so they're almost acting as part of the same object since they've been grouped by the modifiers if you're happy uh, with what you've done and you want to save that state so you don't want to uh, play around with it with the modifiers anymore just go to your stack and this is what we call this area just right click on your stack and then say collapse all as soon as you hit that a little warning pop-up will come up just say yes and now uh, you notice when I select this object that we didn't uh, we didn't collapse down, we've still got our modifiers being listed. But when I select this object, you notice it's now an editable mesh, meaning uh, the modifier state has been imprinted onto it, so we can't change it uh, anymore with the modifier. If we want to, we're going to have to apply another modifier and then continue uh, working on it in that way. And that's pretty much uh, how the modifiers work. So I'll advise you to sort of go through the list and play around with some of them. But um, then again, don't worry, because in the tutorials where they're needed, I'll give more explanations on how they work and how to go about them. So thanks for tuning in to today's tutorial, and I'll look forward to seeing you on the next lesson. Bye for now.